everybody coming in. Okay. Hello to everybody coming in. And hello to everybody who will watch the playback. Um, I'm actually going to jump right in because I know that I am running late. Okay, Spirit has been changing uh, this message, changing how the message is going to be given and changing even the location of where the message was going to be given. Um, I was supposed to be in a different setting uh, for today's Art of Ritual. For those of you who had a chance to check out our supply list um, for today's episode of um, our Art of Ritual, I Want It All Back. Um, and so this episode was supposed to take place inside of some bath water but at the last minute, I could not find my stopper. And so I had to eventually just stop. Hi, goddess. I had to eventually stop and just surrender and and if it and take it as it wasn't meant for it to be given in that, that location. And so that's why I'm running late uh, because I had to switch everything up. Okay, guys. And so um, I want to start this message with saying first of all welcome uh to this sunday's episode of our art of ritual titled i want it all back uh today's art of ritual episode is focusing on hijacking physical hijacking of the body and spiritual hijacking uh, and i think as this episode goes along you guys are going to be able to have a better understanding of how to identify uh the spiritual hijacking when it's happening around us um, and when it when it's happening to you, um, and so before we jump in, uh, there is a message uh, that came today uh, via a download uh, that Spirit had is having me to deliver, and it's a heavy message. And I think that the message also um, goes very very well with today's episode as it relates to spiritual hijacking. Um, and this is a warning, um, a warning to those who are still connected in any type of way to the system um, that we also call Babylon, um, the, be it the prophet of Babylon, Babylon, be it indulging in the pleasures of Babylon, um, or just loving the experience of Babylon at the result of sacrificing your spiritual walk and your spiritual path, uh, which is really where spirit is redirecting us. And so there is a message that I want to give um, before we get into the meat of today's episode. Um, and then uh, there is a poem that I want to start uh, today's episode off. 
um and the poem is oh sorry guys look i'm kicking y'all i'm kicking y'all okay we're back okay there is a poem that i am going to play uh that was given to me for today's episode you guys know that i usually work with music uh, or we open up our episode with a little bit of music mancy uh and so today's um episode is a little different that spirit gave me a poem to play um that it, that corresponds with today's message and it is titled somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff okay and so i'm going to play this poem in the same way in which you would engage in music mancy the same way in which uh, you will sit in the presence of worship unto yourself. Uh, this is the same way that I desire for you guys to take in this poem and to really listen to the words and to digest this poem within your spirit uh, and within your conscious mind because it's going to connect to today's message. And so this poem is titled, Somebody Almost Walked Off With All of My Stuff. And so welcome uh, to this week's episode of our Art of Ritual. I want it all back. My name is Rumunera Holland Bay, for those of you who may just be joining us and may be new to the sanctuary. And welcome back to all of those who are consistently kicking it with us uh, with every episode uh, and with every, each content that we push out over here at the sanctuary. Guys, welcome. And so let's jump right in. Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. Not my poems or a dance I gave up in the street. But somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. Like a kleptomaniac, working hard and forgetting while stealing. This is mine. This ain't your stuff. Now why don't you put me back and let me hang out in my own self? Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff and didn't care enough to send a notice home saying I was late for my solo conversation or two sizes too small for my own tacky skirts? What can anybody do with something of no value on an open market? Did you get a dime for my things? Hey man, where you going with all of my stuff? This is a woman's trip. And I need my stuff to, oh, uh, yeah, daddy, uh, I got a main line number from my own shit. Now, would you put me back and, and let me play my duet with this silver ring in my nose? Honest to God, somebody almost ran off with all of my stuff and I didn't bring anything but the kick and the sway of it. The perfect ass for my man, and none of it is theirs. This is mine. And to Saki, her own things, that's my name. Now give me my stuff. I see you hiding my laugh, and how I sit with my legs open sometimes to, to, to give my crotch some sunlight. And there goes my love, my toes, my chewed up fingernails. Nigga, with the curls in your hair, Mr. Louisiana hot link, I want my stuff back, my rhythms, my, my voice, open my mouth. And let me talk you out of throwing my shit into the sewer. This is some delicate leg and whimsical kiss. I got to have to give to my choice. Without you running off with all of my shit. Now you can't have me lest I give me away. And I was doing all that till you ran off on a good thing. Who is this you left me with? Some simple bitch with a bad attitude. I want my things. I want my arm with the hot iron scar. I want my leg with the flea bite. I want my callous feet and quick language back in my mouth. Fried plantain. 
pineapple, pear, juice, sunra, and Joseph, and jewels. I want my own things, how I live them, and give me my memories, how I was when I was there. You can't have them or do nothing with them. Stealing my shit from me don't make it yours, makes it stolen. Somebody almost ran off with all of my stuff. And I was standing there looking at myself the whole time. And it wasn't a spirit took my stuff. It was a man whose ego walked round like the Rodan shadow. Was a man fastening my innocence. Was a lover I made too much room for. Almost ran off with all of my stuff. And I didn't know I'd give it up so quick. And the one running with it don't know he got it. And I'm shouting, this is mine. And he don't know he got it. My stuff is the anonymous, rip-off treasure of the year. Did you know somebody almost got away with me? Me, in a plastic bag under their arm. Me, dangling on a string of personal carelessness. I'm splattered with mud and city rain. And no, I didn't get a chance to take a douche. Hey man, this is not your prerogative. I gotta have me in my pocket to get round like a good woman should and make the poem in the pot or the chicken in the dance. What I got to do, I gotta have my stuff to do it with too. Why don't you find your own things and leave this package of me for my destiny? What you gotta get from me, I'll give it to you, yeah. I'll give it to you. Round five o'clock in the winter, when the sky is blue red and the dew city is getting pressed, if it's really my stuff, you gotta give it to me. If you really want it, I'm the only one can handle it. All right, Tom. I love 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 this poem because it really gives us a clear look at somebody coming into in this case when you guys if you guys have a moment to go and find the poem and read and read it uh it's coming from a woman's perspective of speaking about a about a man a man that she loves a man that she's catered to um, a man that she's poured into that's getting away with all her stuff and not the things that she's given freely or willingly, but the things that she didn't get. That's why you guys heard her speak about wanting her freckles back and wanting the scars on her legs. And so in a sense, what we see her doing is asking for <laughs> it's Coco guys, that's Coco for you. In a sense, what we see her doing um, is asking for her identity back or trying to find her identity back the one that she lost within trying to keep this relationship together and so today's episode um is titled i want it all back and today's um art of ritual uh i'm going to begin and start it with the warning and the message that was given uh by spirit or the way that they titled themselves, they call themselves the council. Uh, this is a divine message from the council. Um, and they gave me the scripture, Revelations um, chapter 18. Um, and it reads, After this, I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, 
a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of passion, of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of earth have committed immorality with her. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Then I heard another voice calling from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Least you take part in her sins. Least you share in her plagues. For her sins are heaped high as heaven. And God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as her, she herself has paid back others. And repay her double for her deeds. Makes a double portion for her in the cup that she makes. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury. So give her a measure like of torment and mourning. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen. I am no widow. And mourning I shall never see. For this reason her plagues will come in a single day. Death and mourning and famine, and she will burn up with fire. For mighty is the Lord. And we're going to break down these words, guys. For mighty is the Lord who has judged her. And the kings of the earth who have committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her. Will weep and wail over her as they, as they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city of Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her, since no one buys their cargo anymore, cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linens, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented woods, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood and bronze and iron and marble and cinnamon and spice and incense and myrrh and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and cattle and sheep and horses, and chariots, and slaves, that is human souls. The fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you, and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost, never to be found again. The merchants of these wares who, who gained wealth from her will stand far off in fear of her, torment, weeping, and mourning aloud, alas, alas, the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, adorned and with gold, with jewels and with pearls. For in a single hour, all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafaring men and sailors and all whose trade is on the seas stood far off and cried out, as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like this great city? And they threw dust upon their heads as they weeped and mourned and crying out, Alas, alas, the great city where all who had shipped at sea grew rich by her wealth. For in a single hour, she has been laid to waste. Rejoice over her, O heavens and your saints, and your apostles, and your prophets. For God has given judgment for you against her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like, like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence and will, and will be found no more. And the sound of the harpist and the musicians of the flute players and the trumpeteers will be heard and you no more. And a craftsman of any crafts will be found and you no more. And the sound of the mill will be heard and you no more. And the light of the lamp will shine within you no more. And the voice of the bridegroom 
and the bride will be heard and you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of this earth and all nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all whom have been slain on the earth. And the message is from the divine council is that judgment begins. And that those of you who still are finding pleasure in this system, those of you who are still listening to this system, especially as it relates to the body, as it relates to the spirit, you are going to fall unless you disconnect. Because what spirit has been showing me all day, especially as it relates to this message, is that Babylon or what we know about Babylon has been inverted. And those of us who do just a little bit of history um, on re and researching of who the real Babylonia was, uh, you will learn that she was a representation of the mother, of the divine mother, okay? She ruled over this earth, I believe California specifically. Um, and so the image of her and the understanding of her and the history of her was washed away and it was replaced with an artificial queen, okay? Because at the end, end of the day, it is the divine mother, or should I say the illusion of the divine mother that has been in place and that has been orchestrating conjure on this planet uh, in a way that spirit is now washing it clean. And when we look at Revelation 18, the whole chapter, a spirit had a specific focus. Guys, I keep kicking this thing. Spirit had a specific focus um, on verses 21 through 24. Okay? And what is speaking about, or what spirit gave to me, and I'm trying to find the best way to make this make sense. Uh, Spirit said to me that they were removing the sound of Babylon. And that is why there was a heavy focus on verses 21 through 24. Uh, because in, within these verses, you see that Spirit is dealing really with, this, with the element of air. We look at the musicians, we look at the flute players, we look at the trumpeters. Uh, Spirit is speaking about not being heard anymore as it relates to verses 21 through 24. And then Spirit speaks very specifically about the lamp, about the oil, the lamp within, right? We know that, that the original oil that the Bible is speaking about when it's speaking about lighting your lamps, we're speaking about the oil within. How is, how is your light lighting your path? How is the light that is within you lighting the path for the rest of the world to see, right? And for many of us, those lights have been hijacked, especially if you are taking any type of medical advice from the powers that be, okay? Spirit is really dealing with us as it relates to the body right now and as it relates to the mind, okay? Um... Let me read my notes, guys. Spirit is saying that the portal of sound for this world, for this Babylon, as the spell goes forth, because their spell goes forth through the element of air, through sound, okay? They use it through music, uh, through television, television, telling you a vision, giving you a vision. That's why you guys hear me say uh, on my personal page a lot that if you don't have a vision for yourself, if you don't know where you are going, there is somebody that is out here that is waiting to give you a vision. They're waiting to give you a plan, to give you direction and how to orchestrate and to operate uh, your vehicle, okay, your vessel, how to operate and how to use your light, okay? And so the way Spirit was giving it to me, uh, Spirit was saying that they are closing the sound of Babylon. They're closing the conjure of Babylon. And if I go back in my memory, spirit began to deal with the conjure of Babylon when DMX transitioned up off of this planet. And when the spirit of him left, uh, spirit spoke to me and said that when, when DMX left off this planet, he called war to the land and he closed their portals. Okay. 
And a lot of their portals came in through sound, through music mainly. When you go into supermarkets, the one thing that you find common is sound. And there's always music playing. There was one day, me and Akila, uh, we were shopping. I think we were in Whole Foods or something. Uh, and we were shopping. And I was walking down the aisle. And for whatever reason, Spirit had me take a focus on and stop exactly where I was and focus in on the music that was playing at the time. And I think it was around Christmas time. Uh, it wasn't quite Christmas Day, but it was, you know, in Christmas season. Um, and the music, so the music was Christmas music. And I was walking down the aisle and I was, as I was shopping, I heard Spirit saying that this time our awakening had already began. And I heard Spirit say that the music keeps the ritual in place when they stop me in my tracks. The music keeps the ritual in place. And as I began to stand there in the aisle, they began to show me how the music in the markets and in the stores I operate as um, a hypnosis spell. And I hope that this is making sense. That it operates as a hypnosis spell. Where you aren't present in what it is that you're doing. You're just operating. You're just in flow. Right? Or rather you're in conjure. You're caught up into a spell. A consumerism spell. I hear spirit saying. The spell of consumerism. You're just consuming. And for most of the things when we're in these stores shopping. And when whether we're buying clothes or whether we are buying food. Uh, a lot of it. A lot of the things that we buy. We don't have real use for them, right? There is there is the the programming that we have used for the things that we accumulate and for the things that we feed our bodies that we know that we shouldn't, but we do. And so when we're in the element of shopping, the music is keeping the ritual in place, meaning keeping you outside of your body, meaning keeping you unaware of what it is that you're operating in. You can't be present because the music has you hypnotized. And so that was the first way, and I think that was sometime last year, uh, that was the first way in which spirit began to deal with me as it relates to um, a way in which the body is hijacked. Okay, so music is a way in which the powers that be use to hijack the bodies of the people, or rather the minds of the people, okay? And so that was the message from the council, that everything that you find yourself attached to as it relates to, to Babylon, it will behoove you to fall away, at least you burn up with it. Babylon is cl collapsing. Whatever falls in line with Babylon, your government officials, your governmental laws, okay, their spiritual laws, their conjure that they work, that they work, their schooling systems, their jobs, all of it is collapsing. Their religious doctrines, all of it is collapsing. How you earn your money as a merchant, all of it is collapsing. And spirit is saying that you are going to have to choose. Choose ye this day who ye are, who ye will serve. Will it be Babylon, the hijacked version of you, operating unaware? Operating in your lower man, not in your spiritual aspect, not in your Christ consciousness. Just operating in the pleasures and in, 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 in pleasures that are fizzling and fading. Spirit said choosing season. And that it will behoove you to fall away, least you burn with it, least you wash away with it. And so we're going to jump in. And to the breakdown, one of the words that I want to do with as it relates to spiritual hijacking and as it relates to Revelations 18 is they use the word bridegroom. And when we look at the metaphysical guys, those of you who know and who, who are with us regularly, you guys know that when I'm dealing with words, um, especially as it relates to biblical words, I am most 
I'm likely always coming from the metaphysical dictionary. Um, and if I want a deeper understanding of how um, the powers that be or the world that we're governing under um, is translating these words, I'll go to the etymology dictionary, uh, which is the breakdown of words or the origin of words. Okay, and so uh, we're going to look at the metaphysical definition of bridegroom. Hello to everybody coming in. Uh, thank you guys for joining us and welcome um, to this week's episode of our Art of Ritual. I want it all back. Um, this week's episode is focusing on um, spiritual hijacking of the body um, and physical hijacking or possession of the body, okay? And what that looks like in the world and what that looks like to us interpersonally in our everyday walk walking lives. And so let's look at the word bridegroom because a lot of these words, uh, that's why it's really important for melanated beings to gain a new understanding of biblical scripture, um, and and understanding what these words are pointing to uh, that have nothing to do with your preachers that stand before you every Sunday preaching a message uh, to your emotions, to your emotions, okay? A uh, spirit is taking us out of our emotions and they're putting us into our logic mind, into our logical mind so that we are able to see and to understand what's happening around us. The Bible says, if man have an ear, let him hear what spirit is saying to the churches. And the church is you. The church is the vehicle. Okay? The church, you, you are it. Okay? And so when we look at the metaphysical definition of the bridegroom, it reads that uh, the bridegroom translates into light, literally light, who is divine love or divine goodness. Okay? So the bridegroom is the light. One who dwells um, or who has divine love or you are divinely good, okay? That means that you're already connected. You're, you're already married in a sense, okay? And then when we look at the individual word of bride, bride translates as the affection for what is true. The affection for what is true. So having a likeness, having a loving having an acceptance for the truth, okay? Not the illusion, okay? Not the programming, but the truth. And we're living in a time right now that if you are numb to what is happening around you, um, then, you don't, then nine times out of 10, you aren't living in the truth because the truth of what's happening around us is nothing good. And we're able to see through the illusion. So if anybody is unable to see what is happening before you, especially as it relates uh, to the government, you it's time to come into the awareness. It's time to fall away because it's keeping you blind, blind to the truth, okay? So the bride uh, translates into the affection for what is true. The bride also represents the church, the self, uh, united to the light. So the bride represents being united to divine love or to divine goodness. That automatically makes you accepting of the truth. That automatically takes you out of the illusion of what you feel is happening around you, right? So the bride represents the church being united to the light through the ideas and through the knowledge of what is true. Spirit is asking us and is, and is beckoning all of us to come into what is true. And if you don't know what is true, Spirit is calling you into research. Okay? Not only the researching of knowing thyself, knowing what triggers you, knowing what's dwelling in your subconscious that needs to be baptized out or exercised out of you, but really understanding what is happening in the world as the pieces of the puzzles are changing. Spirit is beckoning us and is, and is forcing us to come into the overstanding of what's happening in this physical world. So that you are able to identify it and to make the conscious choice to fall away. Does that make sense? Okay, so the bride represents being united to the light through ideas and through the knowledge of what is true. Let's look at the metaphysical definition of the Lord and what the Lord represents. 
the Lord translates into the activity of the spiritual I am. And the reason why I'm always going to delve into words because it's important. It's important. And it takes the emotionalism out of what we think we're reading or what it is that we think we're hearing. Okay, words are important because nine times out of 10, you have people that are speaking to you and they are double speaking. You think they're saying one thing, but they're saying something completely different. And the translation of it, the frequency of it is going over your head. It's going through you. Believe that the ritual is going through you because you're operating outside of your body. And if you weren't operating outside of your body, you, you would know that this system is falling away and that it will behoove us to get our affairs in order, to get our vessels in order, to get our spiritual lives in order, okay? To fall away from the things that we think um, makes us who we are or that makes us feel successful, the programming, and then being brave enough to pull our families away from the programming. OK, to make our families aware of the programming. All you can do is speak the word and, and plant the seed and allow spirit to water it for those who it's meant to grow into. Does that make sense? So the Lord translates into the activity of the spiritual I am as the ruling consciousness. The Lord God of the scriptures is Christ meaning the spiritual man, our divine consciousness. Who is Christ? Your divine consciousness. Who is, let's clear it. Let's clear it. Who is Jesus Christ? Your divine consciousness. Your divine consciousness. Your awareness. That's all consciousness is. Are you aware of the, of the divine goodness that is flowing within you? Are you aware of the divine love that you came to be and to operate and to create out of? Are you aware of what is happening in the world around you? Are you aware of the changes and the transformations that are happening within you? Are you aware of your God substance, the spiritual I am? Are you aware? Who is the spiritual I am that dwells within you? Who is the divine spiritual man that is trying to raise up within you? And who is the spiritual hijack that has been taking its place? Who was in its place? What memories, what triggers were lingering? What is lingering within the subconscious of you? Who is hijacking your body? Who is hijacking your spirit? Known and unknown. Okay? So the Lord represents the Christ, the spiritual man, our divine consciousness. Uh, the Lord is also the creative power, the creative power within all of us. Not within some of us. Not within few of us. We hear the scripture being thrown around uh, a lot, especially within the spiritual realm. Uh, many are called, but few are chosen. And, and the, 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 the deception within that scripture is the notion that only some of us are, were called. When the truth is, is that only some of us answered. Only some of us made the conscious decision and the choice to show up. Even when it's not popular, even when you're losing everything around you that felt that made you feel like you were somebody that made you feel like you were successful, that made you feel smart, that made you feel accomplished, even at the cost of everything, making the decision to show up, I say and will continue to say you're going to lose everything getting to your spiritual nature. You're going to lose and sacrifice everything getting to your spiritual nature. How do I know? Because the, the, the greatest image that you've had or the greatest example that you've had in front of you uh, that depicted that was Jesus Christ. He wasn't popular. I don't care how they try to push it. I don't care how his, his so-called followers show up into the world. Jesus wasn't popular. 
He wasn't popular. And he sat with the whores. He sat with the thieves. He sat with the lower men. He didn't go to the saved and to the righteous. He went to the broken of men. He went to the lost, to the most lost. He didn't go to, to the saints. In fact, he told the saints that a whore would enter into the kingdom before you would. And he wasn't talking to the world. He was talking to the church. Because they have no real understanding and desire, no real understanding of spiritual consciousness. They are only interested in emotionalism. I'm sorry. But this is the truth of where spirit is moving us out of our emotions. Because your, your emotions is one of the easiest things to be hijacked. Making you think something is that is not. You putting yourself into moves that don't even um, fit the environment. Your emotions can be hijacked. Your emotions have you giving tithes on Sundays when you know you can't pay your rent. Your emotions have you calling it blind faith. When your awareness should show up and tell you that you can't afford it. That you can't afford the sacrifice. Because you have to feed your babies. Because you have to show up for yourself. Within yourself this week. And so giving out of an empty cup doesn't make sense. You've been hijacked. Within your emotions. Okay. And so the Lord is the creative power within us. And I want to make sure that I'm reading these comments. And I love that you guys are engaging. Thank you for engaging. If there's anything um, or any downloads that may come to you as we, as we go along uh, within this ritual, I want you guys to feel free to share them. Um, even if you don't agree, feel free to share them. Okay? Uh, I am only here sharing what it is that I know to be true. You may know something different to be true. But what we must always do is to keep an open mind when spirit is forcing you to change your perspective. Iron sharpens iron. That's what we're here to do. We're here to sharpen each other. And each of us has a piece of the puzzle. Each of us has a working, a working piece of how this consciousness is coming together. Of how this transition and how this evolving of consciousness is coming together. And I am here to sharpen your iron. I am here to beckon you to fall away from whatever is not serving you. Even if it hurts your feelings. That's okay. Because I give it in love. And I deliver it with love. And if you would but just open up your mind. And hear from your heart. Not from your emotions. Spirit will be able to show you what it is that they're speaking about as it relates to this message and how it's showing up in your life. Just keep an open mind, y'all, and follow me. Okay? Uh, Zen, which is our favorite love life coach over here at the sanctuary, uh, she says, we all have purpose. One is not more special than the other. However, on some, however, some have showed up we all must get into spirit and into our own purpose collectively to help shift this world. And I completely agree with that. She says that we all have a collective purpose as it relates to humanity. She says a collective purpose of elevated consciousness. And I so agree with that. We all have individual perspectives and individual ways of how we are all contributing to the elevation of the consciousness on a collective level. But in order for us to shift, we have to be willing to die to the things that we believed to be true. We have to die to the, to the history that we believe to be true. We have to die to the understandings that we believe to be true, to the programmings that we believe to be true, and be willing to show up and say, I'm going to put an end to it. And how I put it into it is by putting it into it in myself first and my consciousness first. 
by taking back rightful control of my vehicle, right? By taking control of my own life, by taking control of my own understandings and not the ones that were given to me, okay? Let's move on. So the Lord represented the creative power within all of us. And when I saw the creative power, it really piqued my interest on what that meant because you really see the creative power spoken about uh, in a lot of different places. You'll see creative power referenced. Okay. My Shasha says that you got to lose it all to gain it all. The journey of the fool. The journey of the fool. I love that Shasha. Knowing that you don't know nothing. Like children. That's why the Bible tells you that you must be childlike to enter back into the kingdom. That means that you have to come back into a place where you don't know nothing, surrendering and allowing spirit to open you up to new and to greater understandings, okay? But you gotta be willing to do it. Uh, when we look at the metaphysical definition of creative, uh, creative translates into creative intelligence. Creative intelligence which translates into the mind of God forever, guys, forever upbuilding his own universe. Listen, it's a seven o'clock. That's seven, seven days of creation. It took seven days to create the world. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that God spoke into the ethers and he said, let there be light. And on each day, he took a day to create a different idea, a different concept, a different creative thought. He took seven days to do so, okay? And when we look at the metaphysical definition of creative, it translates into creative intelligence, which translates into the mind of God forever up building his own universe. What are you building? What are you building? How are you your own craftsman? How are you showing up as the carpenter in your own life? What are you demolishing and tearing down to reconstruct and to build again? How are you building? What are you building? What are you taking the time to construct what creative power are you pouring into your life? What universe are you constructing? Part of the Bible somewhere says uh, where, where melanated people have really clung on to. Uh, when, when Jesus said, I go before you to prepare a place. Or in my father's house are many mansions. Who is building? Because it's not an invisible man in the sky. And if you don't understand and overstand and understand who Christ is, you'll never understand who the true carpenter was that the Bible was speaking about. You'll never understand it. And so what are you creative, creating? How are you using the Lord that you are, the light that you are to create the universe? What light are you sending out? What thoughts? What thoughts are you sending out into your own universe? Or are you still sitting in a place of being hijacked? Hijacking your mind. Hijacking your spirit. Hijacking your body. That means that you, you, you aren't even operating your vessel. You're completely possessed. You're allowing the world to happen for you and on behalf of you. You're not in the driver's seat. You're in the passenger seat just watching Things happen. You're watching the water knock you and shift you all over the place. While you flail in the water, screaming, help me, help me, God. When Jesus walked on water. So how are you any different if you are that? And the metaphysical definition literally says that the Lord is the activity of the spiritual I am. It is the spiritual activity of the I am as the ruling consciousness. That means that you know who you are and that is, that is who is ruling. That means that you have awareness. Your consciousness has been activated. 
you have an understanding of who the I am when the Bible said, I am that I am. It didn't say that she was that I am. It didn't say that the Pope was that I am. It didn't even say that Jesus was that I am. It said that I am that I am. As the ruling consciousness who is ruling on behalf of you. Okay? Who is the spiritual man that is taking front and center in your life? Okay? So the creative is the, the, the creative intelligence which translates into the mind of God forever upbuilding his universe. It also gives the definition of um, the creative principle. It translates into the creative principle, God as the cause and moving force through all creation. You are moving through every aspect of this creation. You are moving through the trees. You are moving through the air. You are moving through the insects. You are moving through the animals. So when you take a life, you give a life. Every time you consume death, you become death. Because you are moving through every wave of consciousness. You are in everything. You are in every moving part. In fact, they need you in order to conjure the universe they have you trapped in. That's how much you move through this universe. That's how much your energy is in every aspect of creation. Shasha says that Ashe, it can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. I shape the body. And you can. I love that, Shasha. Thank you. I can do all things through Christ that lives and moves through me. What is Christ doing? How is the vessel? How is the vessel of God moving? You can do all things through the Christ, through the strengthening of the mind, through the strengthening of the body. You are unstoppable. You are unstoppable, untouchable, okay? Nothing can defile your temple when you know who you are. Nothing can hijack the body when you know who is in control, okay? Let's look at the metaphysical definition of light. Uh, light is a symbolism of intelligence. It says that we cannot affirm too often that I am, meaning every day that you wake up, all throughout your day, you should be declaring that I am the I am. And everything that you do and every failure, I am that I am. I move and do the impossible. I am that I am. I pull the impossible out of the ethers. I am that I am. I move every mountain that's in my way. I am the I am. The light says that you cannot declare it enough. That you cannot declare it enough, 707. Okay? So light is a symbolism of intelligence. I can, you cannot affirm enough the I am, which is the intelligence. Do you have spiritual intelligence? Do you know who the I am is that operates in your life? Okay, you are the light of the world. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Are you shining your light for the world to see? Or is your light hijacked? Let's look at hijack. Let's look at hijack. When we look at the definition or the etymology of hijacked, let me turn this light on, guys, so I can see. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're back, y'all. I may not even need this bright light, though. Yeah, that's better. And I'm going to drink some water, y'all, because my throat. 
Okay. So let's look at the definition of hijack. When we look at the definition of hijack, it translates into or reads an unlawful seizing of an aircraft, a ship, or a vehicle in transit and forcing it to take a different destination. Read that again. Hijacking is an unlawful seizing of an aircraft, a ship, or a vehicle. Those of you who um, who know who you are, especially as it relates um, to your nationality, okay? Hello to Islam, to all my Moors. Uh, you would know that one of the sayings that you will hear a Moor say often is that we are mooring through this universe, okay? So that means that, our sh that we, we must be operating as a ship. Then these vessels must be a vehicle. And hijack me means the seizing of a ship, the unlawful seizing of a ship, an aircraft, or a vehicle. And if we look at the world today, many of you are being hijacked right now by a vaccine. Guys, I'm drinking some agape center, making sure I am open to all of this communication and, and all of these downloads that are coming in and that have been coming in all day. Many of you are being hijacked right now by a vaccine. And before they hijacked the bodies, they already had the minds hijacked. I want to say a few months ago, I had this dream. And in the dream, spirit was showing me gunmen specifically. There was a focus on gunmen. And in the dream, spirit had me going through almost like... Um, Almost like you guys know, like a flip book when you're looking, when there's like different pictures on each page, but then as you flip the book, it tells a story. Spirit had that was showing me in the dream what looked like a flip book. And the flip book was a collection of all of the gunmen that have, um, carried out mass shootings and what they had me paying to particularly uh was the face of each of these people and each face of each of the gunmen the people literally looked like deer in headlights and when i woke up from that dream spirit said to me that the bodies of the people have been hijacked and that the um, gun violence was about to increase um, all over the world when I woke up from that dream. And when I woke up from that dream, I began to search and to research hijacking and the, and the ways in which hijacking shows up then. Um, and then about maybe like a week later or maybe within that same week, there was a... a sh um, there was f open fire in like a movie theater or somewhere that validated that dream. And so the first way in which spirit was showing me them hijacking the body was through the television and through the programming, through what they were showing the people. And the movies and the television shows, spirit was showing me how they were programming the minds. And so that was the first way in which they took the bodies or took the minds of the people. Meaning that the people no longer thought for themselves. The people no longer made decisions on behalf of themselves and for themselves. There was a greater power that was um, influencing the decision or was influencing the mental laws of the person. So there was a hijacking of the vehicle first mentally. Uh, when we look at the etymology of hijack, it reads one who is held up 
or one who holds up to rob a bootlegger or a smuggler, the seizing of an aircraft in flight, um, to take arbitrarily by force, to seize control of, um, seizure of a vehicle in transit, either to rob it or to direct it to an alternate destination, right? And right now, these powers that be are redirecting your souls to a completely different destination, one that you're not going to be able to get back because now spirit is in the position of wiping everything clean, meaning you can't be saved. Because many of you are trying to take these programmings and these understandings uh, into this new world ever since or are trying to take them into these new universes that you are creating, not only individually, but with us as a collective. And so there is a clearing and a wiping away of the old world, giving you again the opportunity to come back into your body, to take ownership of your souls, of your spirits, of your spiritual intelligence, of your creative power, of your light, okay? Many of you are being hijacked. So that was the first way in which spirit downloaded to me the taking of the bodies or the taking of the minds. Now we're at a point where the powers that be are hijacking the physical bodies, the DNA, the blood, the plasma of the bodies. And I'm sure many of you have seen the commercials asking you for your plasma. And there's been a lot of people that have gone out here and given their plasma thinking that they are helping the world. First of all, the days of being a martyr is over. Get up off your knees and take yourself down off the cross because Jesus took himself down off the cross, allowing you to pick up and to take ownership of your own consciousness, of your own creative power. You don't have to be a martyr on behalf of somebody else's theory and somebody else's understanding. Especially one that hasn't even been tested properly. Okay? So the next way in which the powers that be are hijacking the body is now through physically, physically alternating the DNA, the molecular structure of the body, the light, your oil. Okay? They're taking now and they are what is now going to be known as a possession. Because many of you won't even understand the consequences of putting this vaccine into your bodies. Many of you won't even go out and research the consequences or the side effects of putting something foreign into your bodies. And spirit is saying that those that do, you automatically relinquish your God substance. It's like um, right here, and thank you, spirit. Spirit said it's Revelations 18 verses 21 through 24. Then the, then the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, so will Babylon the great be thrown down into violence and will be no more. Everything around you is going to become tricky. Just by the decision to take on this vaccine. Because now you've given your permission to powers that be that have no type of respect and no type of care for your life. And what are the consequences of that? That the sound of the harpist, the sound, the frequency of you shall be distorted and found no more. Shall be heard no more. And the craftsmen of any crafts will be found no more. Anything that you create, you won't even be able to see it. You won't even be able to visualize it. You won't even be able to craft and create. It won't be found in you anymore. And it goes on to say that the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. And the light of the lamp will shine in you no more. You relinquish your light 
by taking on something that is foreign to your spirit. That is hijacking your body physically and spiritually. It is a possession. Spirit is showing you. And when we look at the definition of possession, it translates into the state of having or owning or controlling something. You are not in control. You relinquish your control when you decided to take health advice from a government that actively is showing you that we are in the middle of a genocide. And if you don't know, let me remind you, we are in the middle of a genocide. A spiritual genocide, a mental genocide, a physical genocide. And you are allowing it to happen by relinquishing your God substance, by relinquishing your Christ consciousness, your awareness, the accountability unto yourself. Many of us are afraid to be accountable for ourselves, our vessels, because you haven't been taught how to make decisions for yourself. You've been taught how to shut up, to listen, and to fall in line. And now spirit is destroying the line. There is no blueprint anymore. But the one that you give and that you put in place. In my father's house are many mansions. I go before you to prepare a place. What are you preparing what are you using your creative intelligence for? How are you in a continual flow of building up your universe? Or how are you continuing to allow your universe to be hijacked spiritually, mentally, and physically? So possession is the state of having or owning or controlling something an item, a property, or something belonging to another person. The etymology of possession is the fact of having or holding what is possessed, a seizing, which sounds like what? A hijacking. So your hijacking is total possession of the body. And if you take on this vaccine, the light, the light of you, the lamp, the oil that lights your path is being snuffed out. It's a, complete, it's a complete possession of the body is what spirit is showing me. A complete hijacking of the vessel. You no longer have control over your body. You already, many of us, already relinquish and continue to relinquish your control over your body by continuing to profess that you are black or that you are African American or that you are a nigger. You relinquish your power to your identity to your foremothers, to your forefathers, you relinquish it. So there are powers that be that possess your rights, that have hijacked your rights, your constitutional rights to bear arms, to decide and have decision over your body, over how you identify, over how you teach your children, over how what you expose to your children, over how you grow your food, over how you how long you can go outside, where you can go outside, where you can travel, when you can't travel, what medicines you take into your body. There is somebody over you that has you in a state of possession. Spirit is showing me. Another definition of the etymology of possession is a state of being under the control of evil spirits or madness. And I want to go here to the um, metaphysical, because I want you all to see that I'm not making this up. Because I want to look at the, the etymology of evil, okay, or the metaphysical definition of evil, because this, this, this blew me. Evil translates into that which is not of God. Unreality. It ain't even, it doesn't even exist in your reality. It's not even there. And we know who God is. So evil already is anything that goes contrary to you. 
right? Evil is error of thought. Your, the shortcomings. How you see, I can't do this. I'm not good. I can't make this happen. I'm stupid. I'm unworthy. I'm undeserving. I'm imperfect. I don't understand. I can't figure this out. I'm dumb. Okay, I'm unlovable. I don't deserve grace. I don't deserve blessings. Okay? Anything that is ever in thought. Evil is a product of the fallen human consciousness. Did y'all hear that? Evil is the product of a fallen human consciousness. And y'all want to know, you want to see a clear example and want to know if the consciousness of the human has fallen? Look around. Look around. Every time you see people lining up to go vote in a system that is directly oppressing them, the consciousness of the human has fallen. Anytime you see people showing up in church buildings, dollying to get a message from the pastor, dollying to get a prophecy to tell me that Jesus is going to work it out and that he's showing up on, on behalf of me, the consciousness of the human has fallen. Anytime you look around and you see people really debating on whether they are going to take something into their bodies that hasn't even been tested, the consciousness of humans have fallen. Men going to war with each other, the consciousness of the human has fallen. The erasure and the, uh, uh, of the divine mother as the trinity, the mother, the maiden, and the crone, the, hum the uh, consciousness of the human has fallen. It has fallen. The people are actually in a state of decapitation, if I'm being very, very honest with you. The body is completely dismembered from the head. And as the head goes, so shall the, so shall the body follow. So who's, who's leading if you don't have a head? Who's leading? When I started this message today, went on to Google to go look up something. And y'all know how Google always got something that they're advertising on the front page. And the front of their page is a monkey-like figure uh, that has... Uh, a skull or they're showing the skeletal system of, of this monkey slash first human uh, that walked this planet and was responsible for the understanding of human evolution. And the image when I saw it, spirit, I heard spirit loud as hell in my ear say dead men walking. Dead man walking. You are decapitated. Because you refuse to pick up your own God consciousness. You refuse to come into the awareness, into the consciousness of what is happening around you and what is happening within you. You are relinquishing your God substance of the I am, which is the ruling it rules the center of consciousness, okay? And so evil is a product of the fallen human consciousness. Evil is also a, ne a negotiation, so a contract, okay? Evil is a parasite. It has no permanent life of itself. It whole, its whole existence depends on the life it borrows from the parent, which means that evil can't even exist if you don't give it a foundation. That the, the evil thoughts of you, the shortcomings of your mind can't even exist if you don't give it a foundation to stand on. It doesn't even exist. You have to feed it in order for it to, to exist. And we feed the evil on this planet every time we wake up and we make the decision to stay attached to a false Babylon that was hijacked many, 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 many centuries ago. And their spirit is taking it all back and instructing you, 
us to do the same, okay? So evil is like a parasite. It has no permanent life of itself. Its whole existence depends on the life it borrows from the parent. And when its connection with the parent is severed, nothing remains. In divine mind, there is no recognition of evil conditions. In the divine goodness of man, the only thing that exists is divine love. It doesn't even exist within the consciousness. So that means that somebody somewhere had to give you the illusion of evil. The illusionary programming of evil. Okay? Such conditions have no basis in reality. They are only conjurations. When we look at the, the definition of conjuration, conjuration is spells, rituals. Like I tell y'all, and I'm going to keep saying it until the day I transition up off this planet. Everything is ritual. In everything, in every day, ritual is happening. Whether you decide to come into the awareness of it or not, it doesn't matter. It's happening. So the only way in which evil can even exist is if ritual is being done to make it exist. Ooh, that's deep. That's deep. They are conjurations of a false consciousness. Apparent evil is the result of ignorance, meaning what you don't know. That's it. Ignorant to be ignorant simply is you don't know. You don't know. And for a while... Uh, we were left with the choice. The only choice we had was to be ignorant because none of us could see through the spell. And every lifetime and every lifetime, spirit allowed a uh, few of us to wake up and to come into the kind, not even allow, I take that back. Every time as these planetary energies came and went and transitioned because everything is a cyclical cycle. And so every time these planetary energies came into our awareness and, and came into our environment, we all were presented with an opportunity to come into consciousness. And many of us, many are called, but few are chosen. Many of us chose not to pick up the awareness. Many of us chose not to to come into our Christ consciousness, okay? So apparent evil is the result of ignorance. And when truth is presented, the ever disappears. And what, what did we learn truth was? It was the bride. Truth is having, I'm sorry, the bride is having an affection for what is true, okay? What is true in knowledge and in ideas, what is true, okay? And the bridegroom was what? The light who is divine love or divine goodness. And evil says that apparent is that when truth is presented, the error disappears. So when the truth of what your consciousness with the awareness of you comes and to the understanding and the understanding of when truth is presented to you, ever ignorance, evil, hate, doubt, worry, rejection, all of it disappears because it was never true to begin with. It was never true to begin with. It was, the, it was a conjuration. It was a spell. It was a ritual. It was a ritual. That's all it was. And how do you combat ritual? With ritual and in ritual, period. Okay? So when truth is presented, ever disappears. There is but one presence and one power. God, the omnipotent. But man has the privilege and the freedom of using this power as he wills. That's the beauty of free will being presented with the opportunity to elevate in your consciousness, to ascend into your Christ consciousness, and you being able to make the decision to stay where you are, to fall with Babylon, and to burn up with this bitch as the universe sets it on fire. You have the free will to choose that, okay? But when he misuses this power, he brings about inharmonious conditions. 
These are called evil. Evil appears in the world because man is not in his spiritual understanding. He has not learned that the all, the all is mind. <laughs> the all is mind. Not some of it, not a little bit of it, not a fraction of it, but the all is mind. And until you come into the overstanding that out of this, out of this, does the things that you create manifest around you, you will continue to operate in the evil of man, in the ever of man. Okay? Neither has he conformed to the law of mind with the results that in harmony appears in his body and in his affairs. Until you come into the understanding and, and stop consciously allowing spiritual hijacking to happen on behalf of you, until you come into the harmony of the all is mind, the in harmony will continue to show up in your environment and in your body. Okay? But he can do away with evil by learning how to rightly use the power of what? Of the mind, of the all. If there were, were a power of evil, uh, if power did exist and it wasn't just an illusion, then evil can be changed. Meaning it could be transmuted, as my sister said earlier when we were talking and breaking this down okay and so we know that evil has no foundation right and the way in which we relinquish the powers of evil is coming into what the harmony of understanding that the all is mind okay let's move on there are two forms of possession that i want to talk that i want to talk to because uh, we see both of these happening right now in the world around us. And it's going to help you to be able to identify uh, this possession happening not only with yourself, but also with your family and your friends around you, okay? So the first form of, of possession is called domination. This is mind control. So MK Ultra, y'all know all, all, the, all the buzzwords, okay? Um, this is mind control. Enslaving the target's mind. And forcing it to carry out the caster's will. The caster doesn't directly control the target's body. He dominates the mind merely carrying out the mandate given from the knowledge and the experience that's available to them. So people that you see obsessively watching the news and Biden said, Falky said, Kumo said, Kamala said, this is spiritual mind control. This is mind control. Okay, using your emotions. I thought it was very interesting uh, that Kamala would use um, the scripture um, of, or the understanding that melanated people instinctively have with um, protecting your neighbor. Um, or being being in harmony with your neighbor by taking a vaccine into your body that don't got nothing to do with you or your neighbor. Y'all, you better understand mind control when you see it and when it's happening around you, okay, so that you're able to identify it. And so some of us and a lot of us, this possession began through domination, dominating the mind by you only having access to the experiences and to the to the, and the information that's solely being given to you. Okay? That means that you're not going outside of the information and outside of the experiences that are given to you. You're going by what's being told to you by your government officials. It is a form of domination, mind control. Uh, the next form of possession is called spell possession. Uh, the primary source for possession mechanics was uh, through using a spell jar. The spell jar allowed the caster to detach her soul from her body and to place the body and, and to place her body with the body of a creature or another person within its place. Displacing the host and its soul and leaving the caster's own body essentially empty. 
So completely overtaking and hijacking the body. And in one way, this is going to be done uh, by physically hijacking the body is now through uh, what we know as this vaccine. Okay. This is going to be physically hijacking the body. The spell jar in this form, the way the spirit was showing it and breaking it down for me is that the spell jar is the body. It's this body. Okay. And the ritual that's being given to you is through the vaccine. And this in turn is going to displace the soul and the body of the person. Giving what? The caster possession over what you think over how you move, over what you do, over what you buy, over where you can go. Complete possession, okay? Those are the two forms of possession. Be able to identify them when you see them, okay? The Amli, then I wanna move to um, the Amli Dem Gala, and I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but the Amli Dem Gala uh, hijack is a collection of cells near the base of the brain um, this part uh, um, deals with two areas in the brain where you find on both sides um, of the brain within each hemisphere. You will find the Amli Damgata. Uh, this is where emotions are given meaning, remembered and attached to associations and to responses, emotional memories. Okay, the Amli Damgata is considered to be a part of the brain's lymphatic system. Okay, this is the key to how you process strong emotions like fear and pleasure. And so the way in which the powers that be is really attacking the people right now is through that Amli Damgada. So through the emotions, through the fight or flight experience, right? You, you know that trouble is around you or at least you're being presented, presented with fear, fear monger, fear tactics that's all around you. And so it automatically is going to put you into a state of whether you are going to assume into the position that they're trying to put you in or you're going to take flight. You're going to think for yourself. You're going to move on behalf of yourself. You're going to get out of the way of danger. You're going to allow your body to work on behalf of you and not against you. Okay, you're going to allow your emotions to work on behalf of you and not against you. Okay, this part of, 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 the, um, of the brain uh, controls the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a complex system of nerves and networks in the brain evolving um, several areas near the cortex concerned with instinct and mood. And they're controlling that with uh, telling you, you know, we're going to lock y'all down. We're not going to lock y'all down. The vaccine is mandatory in order for you to work. It's going to be mandatory in order for you to, to get food and to feed your family. So a lot of fear, sending what your nervous system into a shock, sending what your nervous system into a, into a frantic panic. And when one is in a uh, fear mode or is faced against something that could kill them and could endanger them, most people are going to fall in line, especially if they don't have information geared towards new experiences. If they don't understand and have the knowledge that this is not all that there is. There's other information that is supporting my decision to go against what is being forced upon me. I don't have to move on the emotions that are being forced for me to move on. I can stop, take a minute, and allow my emotions to process, allow my body to take in the information of my environment, and then to go out and to do my own research, to go out and stand on what some would say my own square, standing on factual knowledge that presents as truth, not as illusion. And we know that fear has no foundation in the being. It has no foundation in the reality. So the minute that you are presented with fear tactics, your body shall automatically come to the conclusion that this is a joke. That is a joke. Okay? And this brings to close the informational portion of today's art of ritual, really getting clear on if you are being spiritually and physically hijacked. And right now, spirit is really giving us the command and the call to take back control over our vehicles, over our spaceships, okay? Over these ships, over our mind, over our emotions. 
okay? Getting a control over our bodies and what we most believe to be true and what we're willing to do as it relates to our body. And the ritual, I had a completely different ritual that spirit or that I wanted to do. Uh, and when the warning from spirit came in, uh, they gave me a completely different ritual for me to give to y'all. So I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to give this ritual to you. And this ritual for today's art of ritual involves water. And that's why this ritual was supposed to take place from my bathtub. Uh, but spirit had other plans. Um, and I think that that was also me not needing to do this um, on social media and to the world because of what this ritual is going to do. It's super, super powerful and it really is going to allow you to remove the, the hijacking of the body that's t that, that has taken place. And for you to take back ownership, to take back possession of your own vehicle. And so the ritual is as follows. Um, you are going to obviously set your atmosphere. One of the ways in which you can um, clear and consecrate your environment is using our um, invitation con uh, goddess resin blend. Uh, and this consecration red is, I'm sorry, this invitation goddess resin blend uh, was set with the intention to invite in the triple goddess, if I'm being very honest with you. Um, it is an invitation to invite in the mother, the divine mother. And that is exactly what we want to do because the mother is almost taking us back into the womb, back into the waters of the womb in order for you to be, in order for your vehicle to be rebirthed again so that it can come back into harmony with the world around you so that it can relinquish the controls of possession that has taken place and that has taken place um, on us individually and over us as a collective. Okay, and so you are the first step you are going to set your atmosphere how absolutely um, and then you want to run your bath water and as you're running your water, you're going to really be programming and speaking to your water. Guys, water is a powerful, powerful conduit um, to help really transform the body and the mind. And I hear Spirit saying that this is also a rebaptism. I hear the spirit saying that this is also a rebaptism. And so as you're running your bath water, you already have your intention set for I'm trying to find the right word to call this for a transmutation that's going to happen. There is a switching of the body that you are going to physically feel when you are in this water. And you're also going to feel the effects of this transmutation as the water drains and when you step outside of the tub. And so once you are finished running your water, you are going to then program your water for what you are doing, transmuting the body, the physical body, transmuting the ship and taking back possession of the body. And you are removing and relinquishing control to the hijack, to the hijacking, okay? And so once your water is ran, you are going to program your water with your words, with your touch. You can also use a singing bowl as well to program the water. Uh, you're also going to program the water with your intention. Uh, step two, you can use your sound bowl to then change the frequency of the water. Because we know that as you program water, it actually programs. It actually changes the chemical structure of the water. It changes it from being... Um, um, uh, movable and flowing and it changes your water and crystallizes it into a solid form, a solid frequency. Okay. And so you're going to change the water of the frequency. If you have sound, a sound bowl, maybe you have some bells or something as well. You can use that. Step three, uh, once you have programmed your water, um, you are now in contract with this water. Okay, uh, it's no longer just we have to really reprogram how we understand and how we work with water and what we know water to be a great book for you guys to really do that uh, and to really study and understand water is called uh, this is a great book called The Hidden Messages in Water. And this is a great book on how to work with water and how we program water knowingly and unknowingly and how we should 
program our water before we do anything, be it wash your face, be it wash your body, be it drinking, be it cooking in it. We should always be programming uh, and setting the intention within our water. And so now you are in contract with this water, okay? And the contract that you are in is a switching of the vessels, okay? You are giving back your hijacked body, the thoughts that's attached to it, the emotions that's attached to it, the experiences that's attached to it. So that means that we're dealing with what? The subconscious, okay? And so you are exchanging and switching the hijacked body and giving it back for the return of yourself. For the return of your Christ mind, your Christ consciousness, for your God substance. Step four, you are then going to submerge your entire body, hair included, head included. The only thing that should be out of the water is obviously your face so that you can breathe. You're going to submerge your whole body into the water. And you're going to then lay in meditation until you feel the switch. This can happen in five minutes. This can happen in ten minutes. You may find yourself having laid in the water for an hour, maybe two hours. Your focus is not on the time in which you should lay in the water. You are going to lay in the water and, and to sit with this element and to immerse yourself in this element. Baptizing, guys. Remember baptizing? You're going to baptize, meaning immerse yourself in any element. This element, we are working with water, okay? Uh, water... I wrote it down somewhere so that I can tell y'all. Water corresponds to fear and emotions. Isn't that interesting? And so we're working with the element of water. And so we know that the element of water corresponds to fear and our emotions. And so as we are laying in this water, waiting for the Divine Mother to switch the bodies, this water is literally removing the fear, the fear that comes with the hijacked body that doesn't belong with for, to you, the emotions that come with the with the hijacked body, the experiences that come with the, the hijacked body, the thoughts, the communications, the feelings that come with this hijacked body for the return of yourself, okay? And as you're laying in meditation, submerged completely into the water, you're waiting for this switch to happen. So you're literally meditating. Make sure that you guys play some music. I'm going to suggest... Um, the yam meditation, which deals with the heart chakra, which deals with the subconscious. Um, you guys can find it on YouTube. Just look up Y-A-M um, meditation, frequency meditations. Um, and so you're going to lay in this water submerged until you feel the switch. How long that takes depends on you and spirit and the divine mother. Uh, when you are ready to come up from the water, you are going to sit up. And this is where you're going to pull out your journal. And in your journal, you're going to journal the experience. You're going to journal whatever comes up. You're going to journal the downloads that come to you and that were given to you. You're going to journal what the experience feels like. You're going to journal what the experience looked like. Okay, you're going to journal whatever comes up for you because Spirit said that there is going to be messages within this water. You are going to physically feel the switch, okay? And so once you are finished journaling, before you, you get out of the tub, you are going to say one more prayer, set your intention, say a prayer of intention, and then you are going to lovingly thank the water, okay? You're going to give thanks to the work that the water did on behalf of you. You're going to thank the, the water for the experience that it provided for you, for the healing that it provided for you, for the ritual that it provided for you. You're going to thank your water, okay? But this is before you drain it. And then before you drain your water, make sure that you guys have a glass cup next to you or a mason jar. Before you drain your water, you're going to collect some of the water in this jar or in your cup. And you're going to sit it to the side. And then uh, you are going to... As you're allowing, sorry guys, I'm reading my notes. I'm trying to make sure that I give this ritual the correct way. So after you've collected your, your, your bit of water from your tub, from your bath, you're going to allow the water to then drain. And you're not going to get out of the tub. You're going to stay in the tub as the water is draining. 
and as the water is draining i want you guys to see the hijacked body leaving and draining as the water leaves as the water is draining within your mind don't even look at the water in your mind's eye in your creative mind's eye you're going to see the hijacked body that once had full possession over your body over your emotions over your thoughts you're going to see that body draining itself from you the emotions the feelings the experiences you're going to see it leaving and draining from you as the water drains okay spirit said has as the water drains so as so does the hijacked body drains with it and once the water is done draining you're going and you step out of that tub in your mind you need to know that once your foot touches that floor that you step out into your god substance into your god consciousness into your christ consciousness the moment your feet hits the ground you are now activated in your god substance and so you then have a responsibility to operate like the god that you are okay you have a responsibility to operate in and out of your christ consciousness okay and then once you are done stepping out cleaning yourself off getting yourself together i want you guys to take one more uh, moment and to sit in meditation and i want you guys to journal one more time journal one more time and this last journal is the contract that you make between yourself this is the contract that you now bind this vessel to okay you are now in full possession of this body and so what is the contract that you're going to give this vessel what is the contract that you're going to hold yourself to okay that is out of your christ consciousness okay and then the last instruction that spirit told me to give you guys once you are done journaling you are going to seal yourself with a protection sigil whatever that sigil looks like to you it can be your name those of you who are unfamiliar with how to create a sigil um, go and look it up online or pull up a youtube video it's very easy Spirit says that they want you guys to cover yourself once you are done in ritual and to seal your vessel with a protection sigil. And this is going to keep your body from being hijacked and taken over again. Okay, seal yourself in a protection sigil. Um, and if you guys want to do some cord cutting uh, while you're in that tub, I, I absolutely recommend it and suggest you guys to do some etheric cord cutting as well. Cut the cords that and the tethers that were created and attached to the hijacked body, to the hijacked mind, to the hijacked spirit, to the hijacked emotions. Make sure that you guys cut and sever those connections as well. Um, and this brings us to a close for this week's episode of our Art of Ritual. I want it all back i'm taking it all back i'm taking full possession over everything that was mine in order for me to now operate fully in my creative power which is what being continuously in the act of upbuilding your own universe not somebody else building it for you not somebody else running it for you but you being fully and your God substance and your God power. If you find that you've been hijacked, if you feel like you know somebody, a family or a friend that may have been hijacked and taken over, I encourage you guys to share this live with them in hopes that it will um, change their perspective and change their understanding of what they believe to be true that is happening around the member. We're out of the age of Pisces, I believe, and we're in the age of Aquarius, I know. And what you must know moving forward is that you are that you are. I am that I am. Always moving in everything in this universe. I am in the trees, in the birds, 
in the air, in the water. You are moving through every aspect of this consciousness, of your consciousness, of your universe. You are controlling and building it up or you are tearing it down. And again, the message from spirit is to fall away. Fall away from Babylon and everything attached to her. Least you fall with it. And so I hope that you guys were able to take something away from this week's episode. And I'd really love to hear um, how the ritual went for those of you um, who can find some time to engage and feel that you need to engage. It is my suggestion that everybody who spirit allows to come across this video, that you absolutely make it your business to engage um, in this ritual, in this water ritual, in this reprogramming, retransmuting water ritual. Uh, if for nothing else, to take back control of your body, okay? If nothing else, to take back control of your power. And so, until next week, guys, I will see you and I bid you all a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night. Peace, y'all.